Let's talk a little bit about axe and sword. Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So apologies for not having uploaded any videos in the last few days. Um, I've had a horrible flu, unfortunately, which knocked out my voice. And as you can imagine, for making videos, your voice is fairly important. Um, but something that um, I've noticed in lots of movies and indeed things like role-playing games and books, um, but additionally, something that um, gets asked of me is, would an axe make a good offhand weapon? Or indeed, would an axe make a good dominant weapon if used with a sword? And of course, this comes under the heading of, of dual wielding. And people in the modern day love dual wielding. Now, before we go into any discussion on dual wielding, we have to say the most dominant form of dual wielding with a sword should and was always with a shield. Um, the shield and the sword work fantastically together. They work well as a weapon set against all other types of weapons. If it's rapier and dagger or spear or spear and shield or halberd or what, a long sword, whatever. Sword and shield are really, really formidable um, combination. And it, it should be no surprise that when swords were used in history, for most of history when swords were used, they were used with shields. Now I'll talk a little bit more about that as a specific point in a, in a future video. Um, but just to say here that when we're talk, making any discussions of dual wielding, the first thing we should say for the context is that the predominant form of sensible dual wielding is to do it with a shield. But let's assume for a second, for some reason, we either don't have a shield, we've lost our shield, we can't carry a shield. There are historical scenarios where that might be the case. And even if you're doing a role playing game or maybe it's a, a video game, whatever, there might be scenarios where you can't or your character can't carry a shield. What might this be? Well, quite simply, in civilian life, you can quite, in, in the medieval world, assuming you're legally able to, you can physically, you're able to physically carry a sword around very easily. It's a sidearm, it's something you wear as I've mentioned millions of times in my previous videos. So swords, one of the reasons that they were so ubiquitous and, and uh, you know, popular and, and fit into so many different contexts is because they are sidearms, because you can wear them. Uh, you can't wear a spear, and you can't really wear a longbow, and you can't wear a shield. Yes, you can wear a shield v via what's called a gige or a strap, which goes over, but in practical use, if you have a job to do or you're traveling or, you know, in, everyday life, you can't realistically wear a shield. Um, it's just not convenient. So for that reason, historically, swords were often paired up with other things. Um, and what the sword gets paired with, at least in a, an unarmoured civilian context, is very often about what is also easy to carry. So what are the two things which we most often, or most, let's say three things, which we most often find coupled with a sword, in civilian or should we say self-defense or kind of impromptu um, scenarios are number one a buckler that you know what a buckler is a small shield um, which is easy to wear unlike a big shield or a knife dagger uh, so rapier and dagger sword and dagger very popular combinations particularly in the renaissance when people start wearing the swords more um, so sword and buckler very common sword and dagger very common Slightly less common is if someone doesn't have anything at all as a secondary weapon, um, was the use of a cloak. Um, I'll probably do, if, well I have done a past video, if you search for sword and cloak um, on all the use of cloaks on my channel, you'll probably find that video. And um, cloaks were used in a couple of different ways, but in the medieval period with, with cutting swords, which were gonna deal out big blows, they were predominantly wrapped round and round and round the arm and used as a parrying device. So quite sim simply, if someone swings their sword at you, you can block, it might sound hardy, but believe me or not, it, it did absolutely happen in the medieval Renaissance and Renaissance period. It will stop a sword cut if it's a cloak with many folds. It's like a big having a big cushion on your arm and you basically you can block and counter or block and counter at the same time 
And this blocking and countering is a very important feature of having two weapons. In the 19th century, when um, British and other European writers were comparing styles of military swordsmanship with so-called native or local styles of swordsmanship, for example, the British in India or the French in Morocco, um, they often noted that the, the locals who used a sword with a shield would very often only block with the shield and only attack with the sword. Um, and this led, this gave rise to the belief that um, some of these people didn't know how to use their sword defensively. Of course, many of them did, even if they didn't necessarily do it, but they did theoretically know how to do it. Um, and in India, certainly, swords were used in both defence and offence. They weren't only used in offence, of course. Um, but it was conspicuous that in cultures where they had an offhand weapon, they would very often use one for blocking and one for hitting. And I've even heard this um, described in modern SCA and reenactment circles where people talk about dual wielding with swords. They'll often talk about just blocking with one sword and just attacking with the other sword. And some people do a similar thing with bucklers and with daggers. Um, now, uh, let's bring it back around to axes. In that context, what I've just mentioned, of having a thing to block with and a thing to hit with, axe and sword, is it a good combination? Well, the first thing you have to say is anything, as I've just illustrated, anything in one hand is potentially useful. Okay, It doesn't matter what it is. It could be a stool, it could be... I'm looking around for something random to grab and all I can see is weapons. Um, but it could, be, it could be a stool, it could be a stick, you know, a walking stick or a stick from the ground. Um, it could be a chair, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it could be a, like a cloak, an item of clothing, this kind of thing. Anything in your left hand potentially could be useful. Obviously, again, I talk a lot about the 19th century, but in the 19th century, what would be in your left hand would often be a pistol, a revolver, or, or a single shot, or double shot pistol. And obviously that has a use all of its own. You can shoot people with it. But once you've expended the shots in that pistol, it can still be used for blocking with, as I've mentioned in previous videos. Um, but if you have a sword and an ax, and you decide to use the sword Let's just, for now, let's just say we decide to use the sword predominantly, that is, in the right hand, or the, whatever your dominant hand is, for me it's my right hand. Um, so I'm using the sword, you know, in my right hand to fight with. Even if I do nothing at all with the, whatever is in my left hand, ignore the fact it's an axe for now. If I do nothing at all, there might be occasions where, oh, you see you've missed a parry. That's, yeah, so someone swings at you, maybe you swing, swing at them, them, they deal with that and they do a riposte. You realise you're not going to get the sword in the way in time and dump, you can stick your other object in the way um, instead. Um, and you can do this as a defensive action with your hand and of course your hand will get very badly injured but it might be better than getting hit in the head or thrust through the chest. And so for example we know that in certain rapier and small sword systems where they're predominantly using the point the left hand is kept ready to, to um, push away thrusts. And equally, even in backsword systems, where we're fighting from guards like True Gardent, um, your, le your left hand will often be up here ready, again, to push away thrusts, but equally ready to, if you uh, have guarded something, to come in and grab and close. So having just the left hand there ready to use is very important. But if you've got something in the left hand, if you just elect or you just happen to have something in the left hand, that equally can be useful. So now let's just have a look at the axe. What are the characteristics of it? Well, at its most fundamental level, it's a stick with a weight on the end, okay? Now the stick by itself has defensive properties. If you imagine this doesn't have the axe head on it, I can defend thrusts and if I time it correctly and place it correctly, cuts with this stick. I can also use this stick for, for hooking, uh, so to aid grappling and closing. I can use it for striking. So say, for example, I'm using my stick and my sword here. Someone cuts to me on this side. I could be guarding that side with the sword. Guard, bam, in the head with the pommel or the end of my stick. Okay, just like you might stab them with a dagger. Or if it's got a, um, if it's a stick that way around and it's got a percussive bit to it equally, it could be that I've guarded here and bam, smack them around the face to create an opening and then come back again with the sword. So there's all sorts of ways you can combine the use of the sword and the stick. 
Now an axe has two further benefits, I would say, two main ones. The first one is it can chop. Surprise, surprise, an axe can chop. You heard it here first, or probably not. Um, so absolutely, if you're using this as a defensive stick, like we've just seen, you can occasionally, bum, smack someone with the edge, okay? Clearly, that would be a useful thing to do in a fight. Theoretically, you could thrust with it as well, although with most types of axe, that's only gonna have slightly more effect than hitting them with a stick, although, yeah, it's a pointy end there, probably do more damage than a stick would. Um, the other quite important thing, and this is shown in the choreography of lots of movies, it has to be said, is hooking. Now, hooking is quite useful when you're dealing with binds, that is where your weapons are in contact with the other person's weapon. If a person's thrown, uh, sorry, swung a sword at me, and I've defended with the axe, not only could I now riposte like you would do with a sword, but I've also got the ability to hook and control that blade which could be all kinds of useful. So, yes, absolutely, like any object used in the left hand, the axe certainly could have multiple uses. It could be used defensively in terms of the stick. It could obviously be used offensively in terms of the edge. It's weird doing that with my left hand because I'm normally right-handed. Um, and it could be used for hooking both on the person's weapon, but also on bits of their limb as well, okay? You can also control bits of, or, or kind of pull out of the way the person's sword arm, for example, in order to get a blow in with the sword. So there's all sorts of things you can do with the axe. Now, one danger, I think, to using the axe in the off hand is that it's got rubbish hand protection. So, uh, and this goes for a stick as well. And it has to be said, to a certain extent, it goes for a dagger. Now, the general consensus amongst people I know um, is that, generally speaking, in um, an unarmoured sword fight, a buckler is advantageous over a dagger in the offhand. So sword and buckler, for the most part, I would argue, certainly against swords like this, has an advantage over sword and dagger. The reason I would argue that is because, although the dagger has potentially more offensive potential, in defensive terms, the buckler is easier to defend against multiple cuts from cutting swords from different angles. The dagger, you're more likely to catch one in the hand. And for this reason, daggers, so-called mangosh daggers, that are adapted specifically for using in the left hand for defending with, um, tend to have larger guards and sometimes side shell guards and side rings and things like this. Uh, so, absolutely, the dagger hand is vulnerable if you're using sword and dagger with a cut and thrust style. With rapiers and weapons that more, certainly small swords, weapons that predominantly thrust, it, it is different because a buckler uh, can't catch and control a blade as well as a dagger can. The dagger between the blade and the cross guard is better able to catch and control thrusts. And of course, if you're not facing as many cuts coming in at you, you're less likely to get chopped in the hand. So, in a rapier scenario, the, the dagger, I would say, is preferable to the buckler. But in a sword scenario, cut and thrust sword, I would say the buckler is preferable to the dagger. Um, but moving on from buckler and dagger, in terms of the axe, I think the weakness of the axe, there's two, I would say, as a, as a left hand object. Number one is the lack of hand protection, so you're gonna get, it's gonna be quite easy for you to accidentally get hit in the hand. The other disadvantage, I would say, is that it is top heavy. Okay, and in defensive terms, having something that's top heavy isn't generally speaking a good thing. One of the reasons that swords are so, um, so nimble and good in defense is because actually they're back heavy. The point of balance is about there, there we go. Okay, so they're, they're quick to move around and defend with the base of the blade in the correct place and uh, you know, quickly move it to where it needs to be. You can't do that with something that's top heavy so easily. Oh, the arm prickly, quickly gets hard. You can do it, of course, you know, I'm doing it here. You can do it fairly quickly, but the arm gets tired. It's not as good as a back-weighted weapon would be. So although the top-weighted weapons like maces and axes are clearly better at striking, they strike with more energy, they are slower at defending with. 
Um, so they're the two main disadvantages. No hand protection and top heavy, which isn't great for defense. Conversely, you could argue, but it's better in offense when you do go, do, go to a fender there. Yes, absolutely. But I think given the length disparity between, obviously you could say, oh, you use a longer ax, but then it's become, gonna become even more unwieldy in the left hand. But given the length, length disparity, I would say that generally speaking, and this is where, so this is the point I promised to get around to, um, if you've got these two weapons, which way around would I hold them? I would absolutely, personally, have the sword in the striking hand and the axe in the defending hand. You may say, why? If this weapon's better adapted to striking and this weapon's better adapted to guarding, why not have them the other way around? Well, the main one is reach, okay? Um, so I think, yes, you could do it this way around. You could defend with the sword and strike with the axe. But the problem is you're always going to be at a reach disadvantage with, with this axe um, against an opponent who's using a sword of, say, this length. Um, also, the axe is less versatile in terms of attacks. You can't, you can't thrust as well as you can with the sword. Um, and I, I, I just personally would not use them this way around. Some people out there might disagree. Feel free to disagree. The world has full of different opinions. Um, but so there's one other thing to say as well. Could the axe be used usefully as a defensive object this way around? Now this is something I have never ever seen in a movie or anywhere at all. So this has got no historical backing at all. But theoretically, yes, this actually is quite useful because what you've now got is a back-weighted weapon. Okay, you've now turned the axe head into a pommel. And we all know how awesome pommels are, right? Um, so we've now got an axe-shaped pommel. How awesome is that? Um, and what we've done is we've made the handle quicker, quicker and nimbler. We can do all the same blocking things and, and hooking type things as we can with a stick. But we've got the ability to now, when we punch, to punch someone with an axe blade. Um, or pummel them with, a, <laughs> with the axe blade as well. So this wouldn't be rubbish. Um, it would be better than nothing. So I'd almost be tempted... Well, I, I, might, I might give this a try in sparring sometime uh, with a simulator, obviously, not with a sharp axe. Um, but I kind of think, like, if you were going to use sword and axe, it would almost make, rather than just doing this, I think this is fine. It's got the advantage of being able to hook and having quite a lot of threat with, with the attack, if you do give an attack with the, with the left hand. Um, but I'd almost be tempted to switch that around and actually just use it as a, as, a, as a parrying device and use my sword as I'd use the sword by itself and just the uh, stick of the axe to augment it and if I manage to get into closing distance, BAM! Punch with the, with the axe blade. It'd be quite interesting, uh, interesting to play with. Is there any historical evidence that I know of of axe being used with a sword? Not that I can recall. Um, I'm not saying it's not out there in some medieval manuscript art showing a picture of one person who by chance happens to be holding both a sword and an axe. It might be out there. I can't off the top of my head remember any examples of that. Um, generally speaking, as I've said, I think your best weapons, if you can, to partner with the sword would be a, um, a dagger or a buckler. Obviously, if you have the ability to, a sword and shield is always best. But assuming you can't carry a shield around for whatever reason, then a buckler or a dagger is next best. A cloak is fairly good as well as an impromptu left-hand weapon. And the other thing I would say is don't underestimate the humble stick. Okay, just a simple stick in the left hand. Absolutely, I know I can quote historical occurrences of people using a sword in one hand and a stick in the other. And a stick can be used a little bit like the boss-held shield. Just remembering, of course, that you don't have a large face on it, but you can still cover the lines of the incoming attacks with the stick, making sure your hand's not in, in the wrong place at the wrong time. The Indians have something called a madu, which is two uh, antelope horns joined in the middle with a buckler, which kind of combines the ideas of using a parrying stick with a buckler. So, um, you know, it was an official uh, kind of weapon combination. I've also in the past talked about the Gurkhas um, used to use with their cookery in their right hand. They used to hold their rifle in the left hand as a parrying device uh, instead of a shield. So absolutely, if you don't have a shield, using a stick in the left hand is definitely a thing and can be useful. As for the axe, um, can it be done? Yes. Should it be done? Well, could be. Could be done. Um, 
and uh, I think it's not awful, it's not rubbish, I'm not going to say don't do it, I think there are some cool things you can do with this combo and uh, I am quite curious about trying it this way around. Cheers folks. Thank you for watching, please subscribe, follow us on Facebook, you can buy t-shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.